five months ago, I was volunteering at a STEM event for K-12 students. I was volunteering for Pico CTF, a platform that teaches cybersecurity for free that attracts lots of middle and high school students. And from there, I met a student in his third grade, Elijah. His family traveled to Pittsburgh for his brother's robotics competition. His booth was right next to ours, so I invited him to come in and play the Pico game, a gamified version of Pico CTF. I observed him for a while when I was helping other people. And for a long time, he seemed to be struggling and didn't seem to understand the problem. So he tried it again. Still didn't work. He tried it for seven times and was getting a little frustrated. I almost wanted to step in and help, but I held myself back. Elijah did not give up. Visitors came and went, but he was still there. Nothing could distract him from the game. He was hooked. The Pico CTF volunteers went to lunch when he was there, and when we went back, he was still there. This is the problem Elijah struggled at in the beginning. This question is called feeding creatures on the Pico game. Like the title suggests, the user bakes for cookies for those creatures. The game is based on trial of error and process of elimination to understand which creatures, which ingredients make up the kind of cookies. I watched Elijah try to figure this out for an hour. And at Elijah's age, I was just amazed by how long he could concentrate without any distractions. Even as an adult, sometimes I have a hard time to concentrate for a very long time. And by the end of the day, he finished the entire Pico game, which is, consists of six modules of the game that he played before, and normally taking an adult a couple of hours to finish. So I challenged him to play the CTF. He accepted the challenge and even convinced his brother later on to sign up for the Pico CTF competition. I am sharing this story today because learning from Elijah reminds me of a critical problem in our industry today, the cybersecurity talent shortage gap. And closing this talent gap is the goal of my presentation. Today, I wanted to share with you an amazing resource that changed my cybersecurity career tra trajectory and brought hundreds of people to security industry. We are going to talk about CTFs on gamifying security education. Before we talk about CTFs, I wanted to give some data about the talent gap that I mentioned. How big is the gap? CyberSeq reported that there are around over 1 million people employed in cybersecurity in the US. But over 700,000 unfilled positions are currently available. The gap is roughly 40% of the total required talent number. And in 2025, the cyber talent shortage gap is projected to grow to 3.5 million. Despite facing such lack of talent, after meeting Elijah, I have faith. I think the talents are there, but we need to find a way to introduce them to cybersecurity early on. The question now is beyond should we, but rather how do we teach cybersecurity? How do we teach security when teachers don't know it, how do we teach cyber and retain talent? As a student myself, I had some confusions or difficulties initially getting into cybersecurity. And here are some of the problems I ran into myself. Firstly, I wasn't aware of this career option when I was young, such as in middle or high school. I had only discovered cyber as a career only after I entered college and chose my major. In fact, in a survey conducted by EdWeek, surveyed 918 K through 12 educators across the United States in May 2020. And less than half, about only 45% educators th they surveyed said their students are learning about cybersecurity subject. Additionally, with such a demand in cyber talents, I also found that in 
limited cybersecurity courses are provided by academia. An article by Cloud Passage mentioned that only one of the top 36 undergraduate computer science programs in the U.S. requires a cybersecurity course for graduation. Three of the top 10 programs offered no cybersecurity classes at all. And why is that? The field changes too fast and the scope is too big, which makes academia hard to keep up. I was fortunate that my undergrad was, had a supportive cyber community. But if students don't have awareness of security from schools, it is more difficult for them to learn about those opportunities. Last but not least, with cybersecurity having such a broad scope, there are too many avenues and niche for students to look into. Penetration testing, digital forensics, incident response, governance, risk, and compliance. Each of them requires slightly different skill sets. It can be a little overwhelming for people to break into cybersecurity initially. I had those difficulties initially navigating through the process of breaking into cybersecurity myself. And similarly, there are lots of college students who are exploring their career options we're trying to get into cybersecurity, but don't know where to start. Although I am a student in my early career, I took a try and considered this problem. I am here today because I want to share my perspective as a student on brainstorming a solution. If we want to find talents to fill the cyber talent shortage gap, we need to spread cyber awareness and find a sustainable way to attract talents early on. We want to grow a community and build challenges to make it accessible. The solution of that is through gamification, gamifying cybersecurity education. And before we dive into Capture the Flag competition, which are CTFs, we need to understand what CTFs are. CTFs are also known as capture the flag competitions. Jeopardy style CTF, as shown in the presentation, allows you to solve problems using cybersecurity skills. It is like trying to solve a puzzle. We're trying, we're looking for a way to solve problems. When you solve a challenge, you get a certain amount of score. And the goal is to score as high through solving those problems. Now we have an example problem here. In this particular problem, we want to know what RAW13 is. We can Google what RAW13 is and get an answer that RAW13 is a cipher that replaces a letter with a 13th letter after it in the alphabet. And we plug it into the RAW13 decoder and voila, we find a flag. We normally put the flag into a specific format with brackets. Jeopardy style CTFs have different kind of categories and skills can build up from lower scoring challenges. We can use those skills we previously learned from easier challenges to solve more complicated and hiring scoring problems. It's like how to solve math problems. One day we learn about addition, three plus three equals six. We practice this level of addition for a while until we're comfortable with addition. Another day, we learn about multiplication. Two times three equals six, which is a, just a larger scale of addition. We also don't just learn one thing overnight. We get better through practicing. And same thing applies for CTFs. CTFs serve as a back playground and allows us to play, practice the skills we learned before. After knowing what a CTF is, I wanted to share some lessons on how CTFs can be implemented. In graduate school, one of my courses, Introduction to Information Security, the course was based on PICO CTF problems. For example, instead of learning the concept of what a buffer overflow is, we dug into an application that has a buffer overflow vulnerability, figuring out the buffer size, crafted the payload, and conducted a real buffer overflow attack. 
The class allowed me to have hands-on learning experience and understood security in a deeper level. It forced me to think like an adversary, but also the CTF-based course allowed me to think creatively and challenged my own mindset. Isn't that beautiful what a CTF can do in a classroom setting? In addition to playing CTFs in classrooms, people can also play CTFs in competitions. Competitions allows you to solve challenges in a limited period of time. CTFs gamify learning and makes you keep wanting to go back to it. And the same thing happens when you're watching sports when playing video games. I have competed in CTFs in a team setting before, and the process of finding a flag with your teammates is just so exciting. For example, I by myself might not be able to solve one entire problem. But when I explain the ways I tried, the problems that I bumped into, another teammate are, is able to build upon the previous procedures I tried, and all together, we get a flag. The process of synergy showed us what we're capable of. And I think that is the CTF spirit that makes me feel more confident and makes me feel like a stronger person. It also helped us with team building. I met one of my best friends from playing CTFs together. And that leads me to the, my last benefit of CTFs on gamify security education, which is integrating CTFs in communities that brings people together. And for me, the best times was how we were playing it in a club setting. In my undergrad cybersecurity club, in the beginning of the semester, we held an all day long CTF competition. The club bought pizza and invited everyone in the university to come and play. We filled the entire auditorium size classroom with students. We had officers helping out and giving out pointers when people get stuck. And it was also a great bonding experience for all of us to meet new friends and like-minded people in cybersecurity. And a wholesome story from that is that the best winning team later got involved with the club and two of them actually became some of our officers, Eric and Emmy. It was their first time playing CTFs and they're now both leaders for the cybersecurity club and teaching current students on web security. Because of the CTF that they played, they're now planning on pursuing a career in cybersecurity. And for a lot of our officers, CTFs were their first exposure to computer security. Now they're doing internships in computer security and taking on a career in security. Of course, the use cases on how CTFs can gamify security education can be implemented are beyond just classroom setting, competitions, and communities. Parents can benefit from having their children playing CTFs to cybersecurity skills early on. People who are pivoting their careers can also benefit from learning the skill sets. I have a mission. Everyone should be able to solve one security problem. So without further ado, let's play Pico together. I wanted to first do a demo of, with Pico game. We recently developed this game because we realized that Pico CTF can be difficult to get into sometimes. And we wanted to develop that something that attracts younger kids' attention while teaching cybersecurity skills at the same time. So we turned the idea into developing a unit game. Let's check it out. First game that we're going to do is called Brewing Potions. Making po potions can be dangerous, but you're up to the challenge. Welcome to class. Here you're going to be designing spells to create potions for you with just a chant and a flick of your wrist. First step, click on the procedure block. Second step is click on the slot of the potion making sheet to drop it. Third step, use the loop tool to repeat certain procedures more efficiently. Fourth step, whenever you're ready, click on the cast spell button for procedure blocks to run. Start Brewing World Glory. On the left, we can see that there are the recipe of what is everything um, included, all the procedures. And below, we can see a list of procedures, which is four procedures. 
And on the right, we can see a potion making sheet. Now following the procedures in the recipe, first we amber powder. Second step, we put in the Lars liquid and we mix all. Now this step, the next step, we are going to put in the amber powder again, but we cannot move or repeat the amber powder without additional help. We look at what's down to the right. There's a loop section. And in this game, the point of this game, the concept of this game is teaching you how to use loop. So we just put the loop around Lars liquid and we get an error. Left bracket in line two is missing its right bracket. So we put another bracket in, put the missing bracket in, and we complete the loop. And last step, we distill. Finally, we cast the spell. So that's the Pico game, but there's also Pico CTF, the platform. If you want to take out your phone and navigate to picoctf.org website and register for an account, we are going to do one problem. So when we navigate to picoctf.org website after you create an account, we are going to look at the category section. So for picoctf, we have different kind of categories. We have web exploitation problems, cryptography problems, reverse engineering, forensics, general skills, binary exploitations, and uncategorized problems. And each of those categories teach you different kind of skill sets. And the problem that we're going to try out today is under web exploitation. The game is called Cookies. Who doesn't love cookies? Try to figure out the best one. And we are going to navigate to this website and we can see that there is no hints. So going to look at this website Welcome to my cookie search page. See how much, much I like different kind of cookies. I am going to inspect this page and navigate to the application tab. And underneath cookies, we can see different kind of, different kind of elements. And since the, since the prompt asks us to hint us to Enter Snickerdoodle. I'm going to do that and click search bar. That is a cookie, not a very special one though. I love Snickerdoodle cookies. And we can see the value right here also changed from negative one to zero, and that can tell us something. Now let's go back and change this value to a different one. Let's say one and refresh the page. It changed to I love chocolate chip cookies. Now we can see a trend in here is that every single time we enter different values, the page will show different kind of cookies. Before we explain, uh, before we go into the game, uh, I also wanted to explain what the concept of cookie. If we do a Google search of what a cookie is, what do a, does a cookie do? Do cookies do? Says on Google that cookies are small pieces of text sent to your browser by a website that you visit. They help that website remember information about your visit, which can make it easier to visit the site again and make the site more useful to you. In another case, cookies help you remember yourself as a user on this website. And by changing different values, it can tell us if we're entering the right cookie to get the flag. Let's try something different. Let's try a large number, 100. And fresh the page. That does not appear to be a valid cookie. And now I'm going to brute force this and try a different value. Let's try a binary search and enter 50. See, that works. That does not appear to be a valid cookie again. 
Let's change that to 25. Enter. That is a cookie, not a very special one, though. Now we get the range is that between fifth before one, um, that 25 is a value included. Let's try something different, 26. Macaron cookies. Let's try lower bound. Let's try 18. There we get a flag. So by continuously trying different values, we can get this flag. And copy that flag into the PKOCTF answer and submit the flag. Hooray, you have solved this challenge correctly again. Uh, I solved this challenge before, so that's why um, it was solve the challenge again. And I just wanted to share those resources. If you're new to cybersecurity, here are the mentioned resources of Pico Game and Pico CTF. And my challenge for you today is to go to picoctf.org, sign up for an account, and do one security problem. Because today we start from one problem. Tomorrow, more people will start with more security problems. And slowly, schools can eventually implement cybersecurity education into their curriculum, and more and more students are aware that cybersecurity is a solid career option. And that is our goal in Pico CTF. As of today, we have more than 300,000 active users. The number is roughly more than the population of Pittsburgh itself. And if the population of one entire city can do it, that means you can do it too. It is by far the largest security gamification platform in the world, with users all around the globe, including Africa, Japan, Canada, and the US. We want to present this opportunity to everyone in the world, drawing awareness to cybersecurity as a known career option to students early on and bridge the gap of cyber talent shortage, enabling students worldwide to discover a talent that they never knew they had. Thank you.